What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, yes, we're upgrading some upgrades. I know that sounds funny, but um, when I originally painted this truck, I put new housings in as far as lights go. I left the halogen bulbs and, um, well, we're gonna address that today. So uh, throughout the build of this truck, there's been a ton of new stuff, new GM bumpers, new GM grill. Um, of course, we had it painted, tent, seats i mean you guys have seen it all come together but one of the things i never really cared for was when i bought these housings um they're just really cheap quality and i may end up down the road replacing the side markers as well but they seem to be fine for now i did put leds in the daytime running lights i left the halogen bulbs in the turn signals which i think i'm going to leave for now but these headlights like i was saying and if you're wondering yes my wife's car is out here because it's on the quick charger instead of the house charger. But um, anyway, these housings, they're just not up to my you know, expectations. They, I felt, they felt really cheap when I put them in. And so I've got some replacements as well as new bulbs for this thing. So that's what we are going to be doing today. Now um, you can see that this one is broke. When I put this in originally it broke and I, I um, two part epoxied it back, but it's broke again. And I'm just, I'm not gonna mess with that. I, want, I wanted to upgrade the lights anyway. I've actually had the bulbs that I'm gonna use for a, probably over a year. A company sent them to me and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. But um, let's, let's take a look at what we've got right now. So you guys know, like I said, I have LEDs um, for the daytime running lights and then the fog lights. So let's turn this on and look at what we currently got. And you can just see, look, I mean, look com in comparison to the fog lights, how terrible the headlights look. But we're gonna address that. So um, anyway, let's turn these off so my battery doesn't go dead. I don't know how long they... I've got this thing kind of crammed in here because of my wife's car. Let's take a look at what we've got. Like I said, um, I've had these bulbs for a little bit and you can see I've got a mess everywhere, parts and stuff, but this is what I've got for replacements. You can see the housings are just way nicer, uh, more uh, basically what the factory would have. Now these are not factory replacements. I'll list these in the description down below. I do think it's the best brand you can buy as far as factory replacements, um, unless you go back with an OE headlight, which are, they're just overpriced in my opinion. They are still available, but they're overpriced. But um, like I said, I've had these bulbs for a while and I'll list their information down below. It's from Diode Dynamics and um, I, guys, I have to tell you, I haven't even taken these things out of the box. I looked at them when I originally got them and I just haven't had time and um, obviously been doing other stuff and so this has just been setting. So once I ordered the new housings, I was like, okay, it's time to do this. But Diode Dynamics is kind of the high end of the LED market. So you guys know as well as I do that when you're looking at LEDs, there's, there's a ton in the spectrum, right? So you've got um, your $20 ones all the way up to like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Now these guys, um, just for the dims, are $150 and I will tell you the quality um, these things are heavy everything is metal it's just I don't know if you guys have ever held one of those things that it's just like okay this is a way better quality piece than what I'm used to getting so um, while I do like the ox beam for like bang for the buck in my opinion the diode dynamics kind of is a step above everybody else and we're going to see um, I'm not going to show you guys like a before and after because obviously the halogens suck and it wouldn't be a fair comparison. But what I've got here are just the dims. And uh, like I said, they sent them to me. I'll list this in the description down below and their website. For the brights, I've just got an extra set of ox beams that were laying around. I really, I, if I had time, I was going to order another set of these. But man, 150 bucks and uh, chances are these are gonna be so good that I'd probably never switch over to Bright. And I'm kind of, I'm, I don't know guys, I'm kind of one of those picky guys that I don't like to switch over to Bright because in the summertime, it pulls more bugs to the front of the truck. So I'll drive with the dims on and hardly ever go to Bright's. But since I had those other lights laying around, I figured we'd put them in. But this process is pretty simple and I'm hoping to be able to do this without taking the grill out. All we need to do, we've got these two little pieces here that slide out. So we're gonna pop these out of the way. And I'm, like I said, I'm hoping to do this 
without having to take the grill out. And I think I should be able to. We'll just see. I'm going to set you guys up on a tripod so I can use two hands to get this thing out. And like I said, I'm hoping. Oh, man. I may have to take this grill. I'm really hoping not to take. I don't want to take the grill out. Might make it We're really close. I don't want to scratch anything either, though, so. We got it. We got it. You can see that it's broken, like I said. We're just going to unplug these bulbs for now. You see what I'm talking about there on that part that broke? Just not a quality housing. So let's go grab the new one and see if we can slide it in here. And I probably should take the grill out. But I went ahead and loaded the bulb, obviously, in the bright, uh, in the dim both. And you can see that you have plenty of room with these. They're not going to interfere with anything, which is another cool thing about them. But all we need to do is make our plug-ins. And then before we get, like, all crazy, we'll go turn it on and make sure that they're not... I'm sure that the ox beam aren't polarity specific, but or not not the ox beam, but the diode dynamic. I'm sure they're not, but um, I know that the ox beams are but from prior experience. So let's just see if we can set this here for now. Oh, it's got a shipping piece on it. And a lot of times, guys, you have to adjust these to get them in. Um, they ship in a really odd sized box and so in order to get them in the box a lot of times the manufacturers will kind of adjust them really well really weird and so don't force them in place if you don't have to but let's move this back and let's go try these out and see Oh my gosh, yes. So just like in the past in these videos that I've done, you want your um, bulb to be facing like this, up and down, that gives you the best pattern. And I am telling you, I don't even think I need brights. Let's check them out. Brights seem to be on. All right. Let's see if we can get this housing into place now. Like I said, I probably should take the grill out, but well, they seem to be okay. And like I said, you don't want to force this. If it's not fitting right, try to make some adjustments. This one is fitting way better than the other one, I can tell you that. Sometimes these are a hassle to get in. You may have to move around. I think I may have to get a light to look down at the bottom to make sure we're lining up. There we go. Still think I'm going to have to have a light. Everything fits fine, but I may have to adjust them out a little bit in order to get the, um, these pins to go all the way through. It lines up in the top, but what happens is because they're kind of tweaked, um, you may have to adjust them in order to get those pins the rest of the way through. Well, it turns out I didn't even have to do that. Um, I was just missing the area where they went through. Once I had the light in here, I could see what was going on. Sometimes these things are really finicky. And I think it would be easier to see with the grill out. And I think I'm going to adjust this one out a little bit. I'm just not liking 
I don't want to push up against this and break it like the other one. So we'll adjust it a little bit, see if our pin will slide in. I kid you not, as soon as I turned the camera off, I moved it just a little bit, and now we're good. Crazy. Oh, there we go. I like to leave that on just in case, you know, you come up against a piece of the car. Kind of protects the light and the car. So that one's in. Let's go to the other side. The way that this um, the bulb goes into, like on these housings, this is like a really cheap piece of metal. I mean, just the housing itself is not good, but just another thing I noticed um, when putting the bulbs in, just the other one is a way better quality. So we got the new one just kind of lightly set in and plugged up. Um, let's see if it works. So we got dims, about bright. Ah, oh, we got both. So now we can go ahead and see if we can get these things slid into place. I really like to, like I said, thread this stuff down into the truck. There's like a channel right behind this where all this stuff can set. And so if that's possible, try to stick that stuff down in there so it's not causing you problems when the light's going in. Oh, this housing fits so much nicer. Look at that. No adjustment, first time. I know I had a little trouble with the other side, but I really think that that was just the way I was pushing the pin in. Look at that. Nice and snug. Woo! Looking nice. Okay, so now I'm going to try to set something up here in the garage so we can get an idea. Well, I'll tell you what let's do first. Let's step back and uh, set the camera down here. And we'll turn them on, all of them, um, and look and see what kind of difference. Holy cow. I mean, what a drastic improvement just from light bulbs. All right, let's put it on bright. Holy cow. Definitely brighter. Looks so much better. I probably eventually will do bulbs down here. And if I replace those housings at that point, I'll probably definitely do that. Let's see if we can set something up to aim them. It's, um, it's on a flat surface, but I may have to move it around a little bit to try to face it more towards the center of the shop. Um, just because I think the Tesla here is going to interfere with it. But um, I think I've got enough room here to kind of give it at least a, a little bit of an aim. So in order to aim these things, here's what we need to do. We need to get 25 feet away from a flat surface. So what I'm going to be using is I've got a big piece of board that came with my cabinets that I've actually used to like, you know, slide under stuff or um, just kind of an extra piece of cardboard out here. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, we're measuring 25 feet. See my tape measure? We're measuring 25 feet away from where the tip of the headlight is to our flat part. So if you guys wanted to use a garage door, that's generally what I use. So after that, we are going to measure from the ground up to this little bitty dot right here. You can see the dot right here in the middle, and that's representing the middle of the bulb. So we're gonna measure from there to the ground, 
And then whatever that measurement is, we're going to take four inches off of it and we're going to put it on that board. And that's going to give us an idea of where we want our headlights to face. Now, with that being said, you're going to want your driver's side just a hair lower, but I'm going to go ahead and mark this. So uh, I'm going to get a measurement from the ground to there, and then I'm going to mark it on our um, wall here. And then, like I said, we're going to go four inches down from whatever I measure on the truck. So at this point, we've measured a couple different places. We measured down to the ground. It was 31 and a quarter inches from the mark on the light to the ground. So we took that to 27 and a quarter and transferred it to that long line that you see up here on the piece of cardboard. The other thing I did was I measured from the crack that's cut in the center of my shop um, to that mark. And I did the same thing on the other side, and then I marked those accordingly. So on these, unlike the Suburban, there's a right and left and an up and down. So we have a couple adjustments there. So what we're trying to do, you can see my big X's or plus marks. That is where we are trying to line the lights up. So what I'm going to do is we are going to use a T15 that I've got here in my hand, and we're going to adjust these. So what I think I'm going to do to make it a little bit easier is I'm going to grab my flashlight, we're going to turn the lights out here in the shop and uh, see if we can get this adjusted. At this point, you can see I've got the lights off in the shop and um, I turn the fog lights off. We just have the dims on at this point. And the areas that we're going to be adjusting here are this guy here and then there's another one down in this hole. I'm using that T15 and you can see that I've got one side covered up. And the reason why is that way it's not casting a bunch of light in the wrong direction and we're only fighting with adjusting one at a time. So what I'm going to do is we'll adjust the in and out here. So you can see it moving when I mess with it. See it's going towards the inside now. And what I'm wanting to do is that big dot that you see I'm wanting to move it a little further out. And I think that's about as far as I have for adjustment. There's not a whole lot of adjustment in these. And then let's turn the other one, the outer one, and see if we can get the up and down correct. You can see the lights going up. See it right there? So I still need to go out a little bit in my opinion, but we're about maxed out on adjustment here. So I'm gonna have to call that good. You can see that we're nicely centered inside on that line, and I don't have any more adjustment to bring it out, but I'm not 100% sure um, how accurate um, or how straight my truck is. I really think that we're there from the looks of the housing. So let's go to the other side and see where we're at on it. And you can see it's a little lower, which is perfect, that's what we want. We're bringing it up now and out. You can see it's going out. I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. And then the up and down Can see the lights going up now and remember I don't want it centered in that line I want to come down just a little bit for oncoming traffic so you're not getting brighted all the time but I think we're there so we're all adjusted now like I said just takes a t15 it does take a little time to set up you know a board or something but what I was talking about on this side is the way the housing fits within the grill um, if I tried to come out anymore it's going to hit the back of the grill. So the grill will actually stop it. So I think we're good. Um, I didn't want to go too far. I feel like this housing's a little loose too. I may not have got that pin all the way through. But looking a lot better, guys. I think, um, I think this is crazy better. Got the light off. I wanted to show you guys. It's going to blind you. Look at that. Look at how much nicer that looks. Let's hop in the truck and um, not to be annoyed by the buzzer, but it's just so bright.
Remember, my windshield's tinted. So there's the brights and the dims. Crazy. So what I'll do is, um, I'll, you know, a lot of times adjusting it like I did, you may make some adjustments later on when you get it out on the street. Um, at night, you might find that, you know, we need to shift everything over to maybe the passenger side or the driver's side. But ultimately, guys, uh, don't do like I did. Don't cheap out on the housings because it's going to bite you. They're going to start to yellow. They're going to take on moisture or they're just going to be broken like mine. Now, I haven't had this thing out in the elements, really. I've driven it one time in the rain since I finished it. And, um, you know, it, it didn't take on any moisture. But as cheap as that housing was and as flimsy as it was in my opinion I think eventually it probably would have taken on water and they would yellow you know that's the downside to these aftermarket ones is a lot of times they yellow a lot quicker than the factory does you can see that like they start looking like that I'm pretty sure those are aftermarket as well but anyway guys hopefully you enjoyed this video like I said I don't like to upgrade upgrades but because I cheaped out on the first set um, that's my bad and um, now we've got a good set of replacements and I'll just, I'll report back to you guys. You obviously will see it here on the channel if I ever have to change them or if I have any issues. But thanks again to Diode Dynamics. I honestly, guys, like I said, just feeling those two bulbs side by side, it is crazy how much nicer a build quality is. Like I said, when you have something, you guys know what I'm talking about, um, that's just a better quality product. So both the housing and the bulbs are just a step above. Now, like I said, you're, you're talking about a $150 set of LEDs in comparison to you know a $35 or $50 set, but I think you get what you pay for, and time will tell as far as longevity, longevity goes. I really think they're gonna be good products. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please, like always, go down and smash that thumbs up button. I will put all the stuff I used in this video down in the description, like always, in the video description down below. But um, if you're not subscribed, guys, go down there and hit that subscribe button. Make sure while you're down here, there, you ring that bell icon that notifies you every time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we get into next.